This is the Pete and Sebastian Show with Pete Corielli and Sebastian Maniscalco. Holy shit! There's a lot going on. No, no, no. We're not going to get into that. We're going to stick with the glasses. Speaking of glasses, bro, I feel with you, it's almost like, you know, Clark Kent the opposite way. Like, you, you know when Clark Clark Kent, Kent wears glasses, but then he fell off, he looked like fucking Superman? Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we always try to keep the glasses on? Yeah. I feel with you, you're always trying to keep the glasses off. Right. Because as soon as you put the glasses on, you're a totally different guy. Oh, God. Well, I, bro, I feel when I put my glasses on, it's like the Fonz putting on a pair of fucking readers. It would be absurd to see. You know what I'm saying? It just diminishes me. And then, like, I went to my eye doctor recently. They tried to get me to go with a bifocal contact lens. So I'm like, wait, wait. So when I look down, I look down for reading. I look, oh, forget it, man. So... Uh, but it's a nice studio, bro. Holy shit. I can't wait to get out there and be uh, a part of that. That's a TV talk I, show studio right there. Well, again, we, uh, we're we still working it all out here. We, we uh, I'm looking around here. It's just, it's still like a construction area. We got the, I don't even have the carpeting yet. It, and and I'm wondering why. why um, I'm just I'm looking at the TV on the other side of the room. I'm wondering why, the, why there's smudges all over it. I don't know who the fuck's been been feeling the TV, but the, 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 I never see that. It looks like my kids were up here. Um, Pete, I I gotta I gotta tell you this right off the bat. There's there's been an issue, and I don't know what I've told you, and I don't know. I, I've told so many people, I don't know who I've told anymore. Do you ever have that where you repeat a story so many times you forget who the hell you told? I do, but you're one of the. You, but there are certain people that I know. I thought I was in that short few that you do know, but I, I'm just another one of the herd that you may have or may not have told this one to. <laughs> may as well, no, should no, should no, I no. move before you start? <laughs> Fuck, tell me. <laughs> no, yeah, I know. I know. Well, so, I've all done so, that. <laughs> Sometimes I don't know if I've told you this on the cast. It's not anything to do with you. It has everything to do with my memory. <laughs> so... We've talked about AI on the show, okay. and AI right. wrote a few jokes for us, right? Yes, I think uh, we did that a couple mm -hmm. couple weeks ago. Right. Well, and I don't know. Have I told you I've incorporated AI into my everyday life by using it to communicate with emails? Have I told you this? No, man. Oh, okay, so. What I do with emails, and generally speaking, I've had an issue expressing my thoughts on paper via email in a professional business-like manner, all right? The way I email people, it's like fucking Rocky, right? It's right. like, uh, don't do that. You know, <laughs> like, there's, there's no real, like, gr right. grammatical structured sentencing i respect what you do i do it with my newsletters that you probably type uh email like you talk yeah i love yeah. that i love and, that I and really, I, yeah well it's okay in certain instances but when you're talking to like a lawyer a manager a producer or whatever what have you right. and you need stuff to get accomplished i found that ai <laughs> has Taken what I've given it, right, and basically made me sound like Shell Silverstein, <laughs> right? Like this. This goes back to what we talked about on that cast, though. Now you can't take a meeting with anyone because they think they're going to start to, you know, sip a coffee and chat with Shell Silverstein, but they're going to get Stallone. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I've been communicating with my team via AI, right? And and I and I'm in the beta testing of this, meaning I'm trying to figure out how to incorporate my own personality into the technology, <clears throat> right? Mm -hmm. Um, I'll just give you an example. Okay. Well, well first let me tell you the story. So 
I'm I'm emailing with this, and the emails to me, it's it's stripped of emotion, right? There's no like emotion in there. Uh-huh. It's basically really uh, structured sentences with words that I would never use. But if you read it, it's clear on what I am communicating to the receiver of the email, right? Right. My business manager reached out to Lana and said, uh, is, is Sebastian okay? And she's like, what, what are you talking about? And she's like, well, we're getting these emails, and they don't sound like him, right? Like, people know. I mean, if you got one of these from me, you go, who the fuck wrote this, right? So, yeah. so, so he's like, yeah, he, he's okay. Well, we were just concerned... You know, with the emails and this and that and the other thing. Now I'm sitting there thinking to myself, <sighs> people are people are asking. Can you imagine? People are asking if I'm okay I because I sound smarter than I am. <laughs> I, know, bro. I mean, you if you were secretly take <laughs> taking a few night classes and and learning stuff, the same thing would happen here. They would be like, "What's going on with this guy? He's got knowledge and shit. He's using full sentences." <laughs> that I'm telling you, I told you that was what's going to happen, bro. It takes away the you and you, bro. It does. It does. It does. But actually, I I I almost wanted to because in dealing in a business environment, sometimes you know it's just better to communicate in a business like way rather than speak like you know stallone and 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 rocky too so i can't believe i gotta defend like i gotta tell people no 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 don't worry i'm i'm still as dumb as you think i am (laughs) right (laughs) like right like they they didn't they didn't they they didn't even call and say is, is he is he on something? You know, like, right. is he taking? Like, is he on drugs or anything? No, I'm not. I'm on AI. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and, oh, shit. And maybe oh, you should get, <laughs> oh, God, what a great bit. But listen, do you think there's a chance? <laughs> I'm on AI. Do you think there's a chance that they, um, they knew you were doing AI and they didn't want to come out right and insult you and say you're doing AI. So they kind of went with a, what's going on with him, you know? And and then I have a... Well, here's an... Yeah, go ahead. I, no, well, t- to that point, yeah. it, it, as a user of AI now, am I responsible to, at the end of the email, write in parentheses, email... Uh, uh, I used AI to assist me with this email. Like, do I got to tell you now I'm using this shit? So you know, oh, okay, this ain't. But when you do a sentence or two to let them know you use AI, you have to do those sentences as you. You can't have AI write that too. Because that's your, that'll be like your, you know, in the old days when a, a courier would send a letter and the guy would like put that wax on and have his own seal. That's your seal. Two dumb sentences to let them know that AI wrote the rest of this fucking thing. <laughs> okay. Wait, is this AI? Just in case okay. you didn't know, I used AI to write this. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you're, you're saying, well, here, I, and I, no one I, spelled I did N-O, just bro. the opposite of what you're saying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Are you doing up front, bro? That's What's the, funny you say that? Yeah. Bro, it's, it's funny you say that because I'm thinking of throwing in just in mistakes in the email on purpose as my as my as my signature going. Oh no, he still doesn't know how to spell believe. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I'm 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 thinking of just maybe not capitalizing the first letter. Yeah, yeah. Uh, after a saying. sentence, but this is bro. But this is what's to happen- just. I'm not meant to cut you off. I know what you're saying, but the thing is, AI, this thing learns. So you send one letter like that, AI is going to be offended that you're sending its workout flawed. 
it's going to start into <laughs> it's going to start <laughs> intercepting your little mistakes and fix it. And here's the bigger picture: you're going to send an email with AI, let's say to a guy or a gal, a manager or something, and 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 you want something done, and they don't do it the way you want, <clears throat> and they kind of and all right, and now it doesn't happen the way you want. Then a month later, you go to ask that same person again via email using AI. Now AI goes, nah, I remember the last time we got a response from that person. They <laughs> fucked that up. I'm going to send it to this guy because my AI is telling me more people send their shit to that guy. and get. So then you get an email back from a guy that you didn't even send it to. And he goes, let's do the deal. <laughs> and you're walking in the line and go, I, I got a deal with fucking Spielberg. And I sent the, the email to Cameron Crowe. What the fuck? I guess I'm, a, I'm doing a remake of E.T. <laughs> right? So, like, <laughs> so, <laughs> shit's going to start managing your career, bro. You got to be careful. <laughs> the guy who invented no, no, no. it just quit. No. He just quit and, and bought an island. <laughs> and I don't think he's coming back. Oh, shit. You know how so, they, that, that would be so like listen. somebody inventing a nuclear power plant and then they come running out going, Boy, get the fuck out of here! <laughs> that, that, <laughs> everybody run! <laughs> That's the equivalent of the guy who invented AI quit and he goes, Yeah, this shit's fucked up. I thought it was going to take 30 years to do it. It's doing it. it, it started doing it Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> Whether you want to get more fit, be a better parent, or get more done at work, there is one thing that will help, and that's better sleep. We all know that. And with Miracle Made Sheets, you can tap into the power of self cooling temperature regulation, which has been shown to improve deep sleep quality by over 20%. Using silver infused fabrics originally inspired by NASA, Miracle Made Sheets are thermoregulating and designed to keep you at the perfect temperature all night long so you get a better sleep every night i mean sebastian you got to try these things they're beautiful no unbelievable these sheets are infused with silver that prevent up to 99.7 percent of bacterial <laughs> growth leaving them uh, staying cleaner and fresh three times longer than any other sheets people no more gross odors miracle sheets are luxuriously comfortable without the high price tag of other luxury brands and feel as nice, if not nicer, than bed sheets used by some five-star hotels. Stop sleeping on bacteria. Clean sheets means less bacteria to clog your pores and fewer breakouts and other skin problems. Go to TryMiracle.com slash the cast to try Miracle-Made Sheets today. And with Mother's and Father's Day right around the corner, this is the perfect way to give someone you love the gift of better and more luxurious sleep. Save over 40% and be sure to use the promo code the cast at checkout to save even more and get three free tiles. Tiles? No. Tiles. Wow. Go, Pete. Unbelievable. The Miracle is so confident in their product, it's backed with a 30-day money-back guarantee. So if you are in 100% satisfied, you'll get a full refund. Upgrade to sleep with Miracle Made. Go to TryMiracle.com slash TheCast and use the code TheCast to claim your free three-piece towel set and save over 40% off. Again, that's TryMiracle.com slash TheCast to treat yourself. Thank you, Miracle Made, for sponsoring this episode. <laughs> I should have listened to Musk. No wonder why I invented the rocket. He's getting the fuck out of here. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> we are doomed, man. Oh god. Uh, all right. Well, anyway, well, I, I want I want you to read. I'm going to read something I sent, and I, and I and I went totally against the grain on on what you just just wanted me to do. Uh, I had AI. I let my business manager know just this morning that I'm using AI to communicate via email. Right. Uh huh. But I, I told AI, write me something that could say that in a, in a, in, in a non-Sebastian way. I also put in the AI, write an email as Sebastian Maniscalco, right? Like, so I asked, I asked the AI to see if it could replicate an email like I would say it, right? right. Yeah. And I gotta, I gotta tell you, the AI Sebastian is better 
than what I could have done. Okay, so so you, that's what you should be using. Then you were going before that. Were you going straight up AI without a without a uh, a dash of, of Sebastian mixed in? Yeah, no dash. I'm I'm learning to dash it up now. Yeah, because you know I'm testing it out. I'm like, all right, I would probably never use the word gratitude. All right, it's thank you. You know. Yeah. I would never say I would like to express my gratitude. I would like to say eh, thank, thanks a lot for doing that. You know. Okay. You know, it's I'm, funny you say that because there, I... there was a couple times when I got texts from you that I thought were a little. And it turns out Lana had grabbed your phone and was doing a funny thing. So <clears throat> even when another human texts under your fucking shit. Yeah. You know... <laughs> All right. So this is AI with a little Sebastian mixed in. No, this is straight AI. Oh, okay. Okay. I want to clarify that I use AI application to assist me in writing this message. I believe that utilizing the latest technology could help me improve my communication skills both personally and professionally. However, I'm still learning how to incorporate my own personality into the technology effectively. Please understand that there is no issue with me, and I apologize if the use of AI led you to believe otherwise. Now, I mean, I'm sorry. That's clear, concise message. It's not overly intelligent. It's just concise. Yeah, but I tell you, just hearing you read that makes me want to put on a blanket. It was, I, I literally, it's so cold. It's, it give me a chill. It's like, it's almost like <laughs> they, invasion of the body snatches and they got you, you know? They got you because you're like, I am with AI now. Please do not be worried about me being with AI. It's a slow process. <laughs> you will start to see a little of me more and more in this fucking robot as we move forward. <laughs> Bear with me. <laughs> Holy shit, bro. Goodbye. It's nice knowing you. Enjoy your life. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> I'm going to stay here in Fredonia oh. where we got shoddy Wi-Fi. <laughs> I mean, bro, that was cold. Yeah, no shit. I mean, that, that, if I thought there was something wrong with you and you sent me that letter, it would just confirm that there's something fucking wrong with you. <laughs> <laughs> You're supposed but to go. I'll tell you what I more, what I wrote. Write one more like you would with a I wrote with a big pen. You want to hear what I wrote? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> this is what I wrote. Okay. And yes, this was written with the help of AI application. There's no nothing wrong with me, and I'm trying to better communicate personally and professionally with the use of the latest technology. I've yet to master it. And I'm testing and trying to incorporate my own personality into the technology. I apologize if this led you to believe that there's an issue with me. That yet to same thing. Yet to master led you to believe. I've known you over ten years. Yeah, what that's me. You, that is, bro. That might be you getting pulled over by a cop trying to get out of a ticket. Otherwise, you do not go with yet and led in those kind of words. I mean, and why wouldn't you just type a straight up letter as you and then say, okay, don't be weeded out, but every letter after this one is gonna sound way better than this one, and this is why. I don't think you should use AI at all to let them know you're about to start using AI. That should be your last authentic Italian email. Got it. Listen. All right. <laughs> Excuse me. AI has infiltrated my own vocabulary. Where I'm starting to use larger words <laughs> and in discussing. Th <laughs> I'm look, we had a big discussion about this the other night. I had about 12 people at my house <coughs> and we had this discussion yeah. about <coughs> using artificial intelligence as a ways to communicate with people more effectively. And. And the fact that, listen, and the fact that my people ain't using AI, I'm bothered. Get the fuck on the, get get, get up with the, the system here. Oh. This is going to be, listen, I'm telling you right now. <laughs> this is going to, this is going to be, oh, well, that's Patrick. He's a fucking tech guy. Do you see this being a, uh, a tool of useful communication between the next six and 18 months? Yeah. Even faster, even faster. He's he's even saying, hey, "This shit, this shit." In a month, if you ain't using it now, bro, right? You're in the, you're gonna be in the dust. Well, I don't even think Fredonia has access to the AI over there. If you try to pull it up on your fucking yo, phone, bro, is there you don't even get it. 
Is the empty glass still nearby? Where is the glass from the Kool-Aid that you drank, bro? What are you doing? You're selling your soul. By the way, no matter what, this is what AI can't do that I can do that AI will never be able to do. And I'll make this quick, but a listener of the cast, long story short, had asked me to send something uh, uh, <clears throat> via email, and I did. Um, and then a couple of, maybe a month later, I was back on Instagram and they had sent me a series of very, very not nice messages about me. Worse, each one worse than the one before because I didn't send what they had asked me to. So I went and looked up and I did send it. I just, I knew I did. I just sent it. I misspelled by one letter, but whoever I sent it to, it went through. So I said, I showed it to that person. I said, I did send it. And I even made another one and sent it right then and there. Then they emailed me back. Oh, thank you. Sorry, I just get so mad. So I said, I didn't do it for you. I did it for the person you asked me to. But the emails you sent me, I can't believe the things you said to me. And sincerely, from the bottom of my heart, I go, oh, so please don't ever contact me again. And sincerely, from the bottom of my heart, fuck off. And I signed off. <laughs> And it was, if that came from AI, they would have been about that day, but they know that was oozing Corielli. Oozing Corielli. <laughs> and, 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 and I don't want to lose Maniscalco. I love, I love your short texts, your, you know, out of nowhere, really nice thing you say, and then all of a sudden, very short text, no hellos, no goodbye. I don't want, I don't, I, I, that's you. That's you. Watt loves it. We do the three way texts. I'm not saying this has, go, it's going to be my sole way of communicating. I'm just saying in certain situations, I find it extremely beneficial. And yeah, anything that needs my personal touch, I won't use it. But I think it's a definite tool to give you a jump start. Everything on, needs your personal uh, touch. Uh, you know. Everything. Need, what what uh, are you, Once in a while, you're going to give us a glimpse of your personality. You go, what I think some. Needs my personal touch, bro. You freaking me out, man. I'm sorry, <laughs> bro, bro. This is generally business type communication, not like, hey, you want to come over for for my kid's party? I'm not gonna use that. You know, or, hey, man, hey, what? What's going? Uh, right. It's 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 more for. I need A, B, C, and D done before the premiere. Uh -huh. And, you know, boom, yeah. done. It's actually increased my ability <sighs> to write more emails. No, sorry, not, not more emails. Less emails and be more effective. I, so I don't I have to that. sit there and, you know, it's a and explain. I don't understand what you're saying in your email. Could you please, you know, tell me again what I meant? What, you know done that's all done this is mm -hmm. just this is more effective way believe me I'm, I'm, I'm just i'm just telling you that but i find okay. it odd that people are saying is something wrong with me the fact that i'm using <laughs> words that i maybe haven't used in the past and 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 i think people got the same questions when they were the first one on facebook or twitter or instagram what are you doing putting a photo of yourself finding, you know, like right. th that was looked as as like some weird thing, and now it's mainstream. Right. I'm just saying, I'm getting a jump start on this AI, yeah. and there's other things I want to do with it uh, uh, in the cooking space with recipes, pictures of what shit could look like, uh, food wise. I I'm going to use it as a benefit and an add on to my life. Fantastic. And no, I'm, I'm going with it, bro. I'm going with I it. I tell you though, so I love, I love how you're. Uh, um, it's making you raise your vocabulary level because you want to like match your AI. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I think that's fantastic. That's like somebody, <laughs> somebody sending you custom suits a size too small, and you're like, I gotta fit into these things. These things are too nice not to. So, it's making you up your game and i uh that part of it is is very yeah. interesting so you know but um all right. up my game that's that that's where i'm going with it and <clears throat> from the gas pump to the grocery store your utility bills and favorite streaming services inflation is everywhere seriously make a stop make the hemorrhaging stop thankfully 
There's one company out there that's giving you a much needed break. It's Mint Mobile. As the first company to sell premium wireless services online, Mint Mobile lets you order from home and save a ton with phone plans starting at just $15 a month. Take it, Pete. Wow. At a time where prices keep increasing, Mint Mobile is helping you save. <laughs> Excuse me. For people looking for extra savings this year, who isn't? I know I am. And Mint Mobile offers premium wireless for just 15 bucks a month. There's your savings. By going online only and eliminating the traditional cost of retail, Mint Mobile passes significant savings on to you. All plans come with unlimited talk and text, plus high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. Use your own phone, which is huge, right? I mean, come on. So you get to use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan and keep your same phone number along with all your existing contacts. Why wouldn't you do this? I mean, geez, look at this. Switch to Mint Mobile and get premium wireless service starting at just 15 bucks a month. To get your new wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month and get the plan shipped to your door for free, go to mintmobile.com slash the cast. That's mintmobile.com slash the cast. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash the cast. Where did I want to hop off here? Well, did you from AI? Yeah. Did you get my three way text Good. with Patrick about what I was suggesting with AI? Oh, with the different languages. We put this thing up in fucking Paraguay. That's what I'm Next saying. thing you know, we're, we're touring Paraguay. I'm saying it's the exact same show, what we did now, in our cadence, our voices, but it's just going to be in Italian, in Iranian. Guy, we could do this in Mandarin. And two guys could be sipping tea on the Great Wall of China listening to this shit. Not past episodes, Patrick. Let's not redo those ones. Too many things were said. <laughs> Well, Patrick, so we could take all of our back catalog, translate it into an AI Chinese voice? Yeah, so what I would like to do is I need to get you guys to record this. It's like a disclaimer. It acknowledges who you are. You're, this is your voice. I agree that I'm training my voice on this software. It's part of their script that they provide. And then I can give them hours of recordings of you and Pete It'll train your voice to the machine, and then I can punch in any text, and it'll read it back as though it were you. So I can auto I can auto transcribe old audio, and then translate it, and then put okay. the translated language back into the thing, and it'll read it back as your voice speaking another language. Hopefully, bro. Could you imagine this voice talking Chinese? Like it, it now I would want I would wonder if it the the humor would translate in Chinese if I was speaking Chinese, you know, if if the if the yeah, you know, the the rise in, in voice or inflection would be yeah. funny in a different language. Now I know because sometimes I'll hear a hit song a pop song, American song, and then I'll hear someone singing it in, like, Spanish or something, and you know it's the same song because of the, the melody and whatnot, and I'm like, oh, wow, that lines up. That's great how that lined up. They got lucky with that one. You know what I mean? Like, in America, like, when you go... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, so I don't know. I mean, yeah, like, Patrick, it can't be, like, you know, in China, or, like, you know when you do in America and you read text and the lady plays it on your computer? She would just say, and then... We went to the store. It's got to translate where the guy's talking like me, like the ooze and Corielli and the, and the lean-ins with you and the wit. Like, it's got to capture all that, but in Chinese. So you leaning in, you're going, get the pakran, get the diet. I don't know. Does, does, does that... Does, would that work? <laughs> we got to you know, beat Rogan like to a, the punch. Uh, believe me, I think, I think Rogan, that ain't even Rogan doing it. I think that's his avatar. R Rogan, He like, ain't even doing the podcast. He's <laughs> Rogan's like, I don't even have to do it in Mandarin. They listen to me in American in China, you know? <laughs> they listen to me everywhere, guy. Worldwide. Oh, yeah, oh, that would be God. Cool. Um. So, 
we're embarking on this uh embarking bro again never oh, said that my never said that word and now all of a sudden it's part of my come on unbelievable it's unbelievable man it's like pushing you <laughs> pushing you <laughs> so uh thursday so the thursday i go to vegas friday i arrive in chicago <sighs> gail king is interviewing my father and I at uh, this deli in Chicago. Oh, when is this going to come out? Oh, no, it's not going to come out this week, right? No. In this deli in Chicago that's got a sandwich named after me, right? Mm -hmm. I want to get your take on this. If a deli names a sandwich after you, Right, it's like the yeah. Pete Corielli, let's say. Yeah. Right? yeah. Do you think that deli needs to call you personally or email you and say, hey, "Listen, we're thinking of naming the sandwich after you here. You okay with that?" Or are they allowed to just throw the Corielli up there, and regardless of what's in it, let's say you don't like salami, but it's in the Corielli. Yeah. I guess my question is, That's the problem. do you have to be intimately involved in your own sandwich if it's at a restaurant? Uh, no, I mean, right? I, it's, it's, I'm sure you're flattered. That's really cool. But I do think as a courtesy, if they're going to name a sandwich after you, first of all, they probably want you to know what's the point. If not, uh, they should throw you the courtesy of asking you what you'd want the sandwich to have in it. You know, I mean, like you said. I'm not an eggplant guy. I don't want a sandwich thing that me on Long Island's fucking eggplant. Come on. Yeah. What you? So, what do you like? What would you? What would you like it to be if you could have it be like what meats and cheeses? What are we talking? Uh, I'm a prosciutto guy. I wouldn't mind having like a little prosciutto, a little arugula in it, and a little cheese, and and put it put an end to it. But what they got, I'd I'd eat it anyway. Yeah. Um. So we're gonna we're. <laughs> what they think is happening is Gail King is coming in and doing a report on Italian delis. That's what they think, the owners. Oh. But what's going to happen is my father and I are going to walk in with her, and it's going to be a surprise to the owners that uh, that were there. We're going to conduct the interview in their in their deli, right? Which goes, which yeah. which you know, naming a sandwich, naming a sandwich after me got them Gail King publicity. You know what I'm saying? It just it just goes to show you you never know where it's gonna come from. You know, it's just like this 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 deli now is gonna be featured on CBS this morning. That's well, just because they got a sandwich. Named after you. Exactly. I mean, you know, and then and there you are. Now you're in the place. You know? I mean what am I doing? <laughs> and now I'm there. I'm going to start selling hamburgers on the end of my driveway and call them Brad Pitt burgers. Come get your Brad Pitt. Come get your Brad Pitt burger. 24 hours. I'll have my kid out there cooking in the middle of the night. Oh, so listen. <laughs> but, bro, here's the thing. You should have Gail King go in, pretend that she's doing a thing on Italian delis, and then present to him a cease and desist letter that she got her hands oh, on ahead of time and be like, this is actually why I'm here. And you know, it's illegal just to name sandwiches after people. And then when he goes, well, yeah, I didn't know that you come in. Oh, hey, what's on this fucking thing? <laughs> 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 oh, that's cool. Wow, that's fun, bro. Oh, uh, shit. That's fun, isn't it? It must be yeah, nice so to the like, um, in between all the performing and the movies and TV, like now is the gravy, like, you know, how could this go bad? I got to go in there and joke about a sandwich with my dad. Nothing but fun. No, I mean, this is something else. I, mean, I never in my wildest dreams would have thought my father and I would be doing a press tour together promoting a movie that I wrote about him. I mean, we're going out. Him and I are going out to uh, – we're throwing out the first pitch at the Cubs game together. I mean, he's not going to throw wow. it. He's going to give me the ball and – and I'm gonna throw it. I mean, I, is it, I went to you know he took me to my first Cubs game at Wrigley Field when I was what eight years old, yeah. and now here we are, you know, 42 years later, 
throwing out the pitch together on the mound. So, I mean, some of these things that we're doing together, I'm just happy that he's around to en- enjoy it with me. Crazy. And, you know, awesome. my mom's coming too. Of course, of course, of course my mother is, is, you know, is the next movie going to, is the sequel going to be called About My Mother? You know, she she's wanting to cash in. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> My father's getting to do all this fun stuff, and my mother's like, am I going to be on the mound for the That's first it. pitch? I go, Ma, it's, it's about me and dad. You know? Yeah. So no, the next movie's about your mom now living in Hollywood. I already see the plot because this is what should be happening anyway, bro. I don't know what your agents are doing, who's dropping the ball here, but I was in my garage the other day, and it hit me. You know what your next big project should be, right? It's available right now, and everyone no. everyone's vying for it. Next James Bond. <laughs> there was, <laughs> let it sink in, guy. Can I get one uh, martini shaken, not stirred? I, I'm without AI, just all Sebastian. Bro, they need to upgrade Bond, give him a little character. They're looking for somebody new. You already got all the etiquettes with the grooming and the way you walk and carry, you know? I mean, this is, it's worth thinking about. Yeah, and here's, the, and like... here's the movie, the movie, I mean, the, 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 the movie is about your mom. The producers know mom's going to forget him. We got to get his mother to make him want to be Bond. So it's about, it's about, you know. Scorsese having tea with your mother trying to talk you into be Bond. I don't know, something like that. But anyway, yeah, you should look into the Bond thing, bro. I'm not even kidding. That's All right, I'll look into the Bond thing. That's, you're not going to. That, that could be a possibility. Would you play uh, James you know, Bond? Listen, Would you do it? Anything's... I played James Bond, but it'd be a little with with some humor in there. I mean, I know sometimes it, it sprinkles a little humor in these Bond things, but uh, maybe switch it up the whole thing. You know, maybe, maybe he drives a... Uh, Maybe instead of these hot cars, he's on a he's on a little Vespa, and instead of a martini shaking, uh, whatever he he drinks a a, a Chiani. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I hear you. Something to think about. <laughs> With HelloFresh, you get farm fresh, pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. HelloFresh does more than just delicious dinners. Not only can you take your pick from 40 weekly recipes, but you could choose from over 100 items to round out your order. From snacks and easy lunches to desserts and pantry necessities, everything arrives in one box on a delivery day you choose. Right, PD? Oh, that's right, man. That is right. No worries if you're not a pro in the kitchen. HelloFresh's foolproof recipe arrived pre-portioned and easy to prepare in just a few steps. I used HelloFresh when I was on the set of filming How to Be a Bookie. Instead of eating the catering food that they had there on set, my food was all lined up. That's all I had to do was throw it in the microwave. Boom, ready to go, ready to eat, healthy and fulfilling. So go to HelloFresh.com slash cast 16 and use the code cast 16 for 16 free meals plus free shipping. That is HelloFresh.com slash cast 16 and use the code cast 16 for 16 free meals plus free shipping. HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. <laughs> But anyway, I'm speaking of movies. I'm coming to the premiere, bro. Me and Jackie are psyched. So yeah, you're coming in on New York in New York on Tuesday for the premiere, which is going to be my sister will be there, my mother, my whole family, my my wife and dad, the whole the whole uh, kit and caboodle. And awesome. then, uh, yeah, we got we got that going on. What else? I had something else I wanted to swing by. Yeah. You got anything, by the way, over there that's going on in uh, yeah, Fredonia land? Well, I mean, I got stuff here, but, you know, I mean, if we, we got, uh, I don't know how much time's left in the show. I can go, I mean, I just. Uh, yeah, what do you got? Just just start talking. Well, first just of Just look all, at your I sheets. Just, I just what, wanna, No, 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 not my sheets. I got to some of the stuff here. But uh, I met a bit of a do- uh, pet celebrity recently, uh, dog, man, a dog celebrity. I thought this was pretty wild. I'm in Petco about three days ago getting my dog cut 
and I'm picking up my dog. Now there's a, a pit bull. It, it looks like a pit bull. <clears throat> uh, older dog in the waiting area. And there's a guy there. And I go to him. I go, is that a pit bull? And he goes, well, it's half pit bull. And uh, just at that, and you know how I feel about pit bulls. They frighten the shit out of me. At that moment, this thing rolled over on its back on all fours like a little teddy bear. And I'm rubbing the belly of a half pit bull. Dude, to me, this is like, I may as well be licking a gun barrel. You know what I'm saying? But this thing was a teddy bear. No, oh, yeah, 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 no. And he goes, I go, oh, what a nice dog. And he goes, yeah, he was a, a bait dog on Michael Vick's, pro for Michael Vick. I'm like, what do you mean a bait dog? And he goes, well, when they what? Were... <laughs> Man, I'm about to tell you. I, I'm sorry. Let me let me cut you off. That needs to be said before you even come near the dog. Like, right. if you're in the waiting room at Petco and you go, oh, what kind of dog is that? <laughs> the first thing out of this guy's mouth is, it's a bait dog for Michael Vick. And then you go, oh, okay. Not now. <laughs> Well, no. Now you. <laughs> <laughs> I did do. As soon as I heard that, you do a half step away. You know what I'm saying? But he's like, he explained. He goes, no, when they raided Michael Vick's property, this dog was a puppy a couple of weeks old. But it was, uh, it's not full bred pit bull. And they raised these ones to be bait dogs, which they put out and they, and they get the pit bulls to attack them so that the pit bulls are trained to, you know, kill. So when this thing got rescued, it was weeks away from being bait for a pit bull, you know? So, you know, this dog has no clue, no idea how close it was to not a very, you know, very pleasant life. But here it was on the end of its, uh, you know, back end of its ears in the Petco. And I'm telling you, dude, it was like, I felt like I was in the presence of a celebrity pet, a celebrity animal, man. It was pretty wild. So anyway, this well, is short. Well, listen, thing. yeah. It it, it's amazing though it's like and god bless the people out there but it's like if i go and i'm at the rescue right yeah and they go and i go oh that that dog's cute and they go well this is michael it came from michael but i don't care if it was three weeks old right. and it was there right it picked up something you know like <laughs> it saw something where it could have a flashback on its back, and the next thing you know, he's digging into your nose. You know, fuck that. I'm sorry. Anything that came out of that house, I ain't right. touching. It is. It is. Right? One particular noise that, oh, I remember that noise. Dogs die when I, after that noise. <laughs> That's what usually happened <laughs> in the past. So, yeah. No, and I'm like you. I'm not inhumane. I'm saying we take all the dogs that made it from the Michael Vick thing, and we... We bring them out into the woods and we let them out into the wild, you know, like, like just somewhere <laughs> deep in Montana. Go, go do your thing, guys. <laughs> I mean, that's all I'm saying. But well, right. well, these pit bulls, you know, and I, I, of course, I, you know, I know people that have pit bulls. They swear by them. They're sweet. They're lovable. Da, 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 da. But, but if you had to put a dog out in the wild to survive, wouldn't be wouldn't a pit bull be the first one? Like, if you let yeah. a pit bull go oh, into yeah. the woods, don't you think he'd look back at you and go, I'm good. Uh, bro, you know, like, I don't even know if you get to look back. I think it's just gone. <laughs> and not only does the pit bull survive, about four or five different species of animal peeking out from the woods, see it coming and go, ah, fuck, there goes my family. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> This thing is instantly steps one foot into the forest and it's an apex predator. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> man, oh man, that's why well, here. I mean, you may as well have a black bear laying in your living room when you have a fucking pit bull. <laughs> Just get a black bear. I swear to God. <laughs> so, so, the, so, yeah, and, and Patrick knows this. Right. I think Whitney, Whitney Cummings got pit bulls, right? Whitney Cummings, uh -huh. Whit Whitney Cummings got her fucking ear chewed off by a pit bull. Am I right? A chunk of it, yeah, on the top. Yeah, a chunk of her ear, and was it her own dog? It, there she got it. She was breaking up a fight. A much bigger dog was fighting with a much smaller dog. I don't know if it was if they were both hers at the time or if one was a foster at the time or whatever. But she got she got in the middle of it. 
Bro, <laughs> first of all, the, the balls on Cummings to get involved in a dog fight with a pit bull. I mean, I see that. I go, all right, that's, let's see what happens here. I, I ain't right. getting in the middle of that shit. Yeah, right? We lock the door. Get your face chewed off. Clean up later, right? That's all. <laughs> <laughs> lock the door until we hear no more noises. Then we go in with mops and buckets and shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Dude, I know a woman in our town, you know, an awesome woman, right? Friend of the family. She's a vet. And, and recently in her vet office, a pit bull came in and attacked another dog. She got up and hit the pit bull over the head with a flower pot. <laughs> Holy shit. And they just keep roaming around. You know, no, no, they're usually fine, though. Oh, God. So, <laughs> so this, well, this you, witness, What happened yeah. with the dog? I, I, well, hold on. In yeah. regards to that, did the pit bull just shake that off? I feel like if you if you hit a pit bull over the head with a with a flower pot, yeah, it just kind of just kind of like <laughs> yeah shakes that off and keeps coming at you, right? Yeah, it's like a plane hitting uh, you know King Kong. It's just like a, what the fuck was that? Yeah, <laughs> so <laughs> totally. It just gave the owner enough time to get a better hold of the leash and pull that killing machine outside. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Dude, if my neighbor got a pit bull, uh, the for sale sign goes up the next day. The next day. God, I'm out of here. <laughs> Jeez, those things. And Whitney's got two? Well, I don't know. I don't know if she's got... Uh, she, she has two that live with her now, and then occasionally is fostering yeah she's got two of them at the house right yeah now as a and and i gotta tell you the energy i'm getting off patrick right now right. With, the, with the pit bull it sounds like it, i think he might have one. i think he does he probably does do you got a pit bull? no i don't have one. Oh, okay because i was i was i was actually as i was talking and he was talking yeah. i'm like is this guy fucking got a pit bull and he's like not not into this conversation <laughs> Uh, that we're ripping him to shred. I was playing in L Louisville last week, and I said, I said to the whole crowd, I go, being in Kentucky, whenever uh, I, I go, whenever I hear a dog barking in Kentucky, I assume it's a pit bull. I mean, you know, and they all, <laughs> and they all clap. So, 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 if you got two pit bulls in the house, and you go over, and you go over to Whitney's house, right? Right. Is Whitney obligated to go? Just so you know, I got two pit bulls in the house. It's it's almost like it's almost saying like, listen, just so you know, I got two rifles on on my kitchen table. Just just so so you know, I got I got guns here. Yeah, uh, and, and the safety's same, same off. Same thing with a pit bull. You got and the, you got and the safety's <laughs> off. <by the> way. <laughs> <laughs> so don't spill your coffee or make anything rattle because the fucking gun might go off. But anyway, let's do the podcast. Good to have you guys here. <laughs> 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 she has an obligation to tell you before you get in your car and go there. Not even when you get there, you know what I'm saying? Before you go there. <laughs> yeah, no. That's... Yeah. I don't go there. I don't go to a house with a football. I don't even go to a house with a German shepherd. Yeah, no. They're they're, they're yeah, it's it's a death sentence, bro. Yeah. So, uh <laughs> I did it. Yeah, I did. All right. So, how did I the did show it, go, yeah. bro? I did a, it's a wrap, right? The whole you you, you oh, finish yeah, that, that that Yeah. We'll get into that. All right. All right. But before I get into that, I had a podcast I did with uh with Rob Lowe yesterday. I was on Rob Lowe's podcast. Nice. Right? Yeah. And I, I found something out, bro. When I go on other people's podcasts, yeah. I'm interviewing them. <laughs> right, I, it, yeah. it's like they're a guest on my podcast. I started off with this guy going, "What are you doing over there?" He, he's, he's like fifty nine, I think he is. Right, this guy looks like he's thirty one. I know. I, I mean, go, "What are you doing?" You know him and him and Tom Cruise. I think they're on the same pill. Yeah. He goes, oh, "It's just you know, I have an I have an espresso in the morning, guy. I have an espresso in the morning. I don't look like you." I know. What the fuck are you doing? I have three of them. What the fuck? I should be better looking than Rob Lowe. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. And the third one. He says he puts moisturizer. Oh. Yeah. Cut. 
The third one is the Stamos. They all bump into each other at the special doctor. Yeah. He didn't mention a doctor. He said it's genetics, moisturizer, and espresso. I said, okay. But anyway, do you know, he told me on the podcast, did you know Tom Cruise and Emilio Estevez were roommates when they were struggling actors? Did you know this? I don't know that I knew that, but I knew when they all made The Outsiders, they were pretty tight, right? It was those two and Rob Lowe. I saw a famous photo recently of the three of them, arm in arm somewhere. But no, I didn't know those two, Emilio and Tommy C, lived together for a while. And he was telling me, you know, on he was 17. He, he celebrated his 18th birthday on the, on the set of The Outsiders, so... And they shot it in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And he said, like, every guy there, you know, had their own thing. Like, Patrick Swayze, that's all he would be doing was playing a guitar and writing music, you know, just writing songs while they were kind of just screwing around. Um, And he said Tom Cruise back then, the only thing he was concerned about is finding a Nautilus. Remember those Nautilus in the 80s? They were almost like, you know, like the first kind of gym. You know, yeah. before Bally's or whatever came out, there was like a Nautilus you went to. And even back then, Tom Cruise was, was concerned about how he was going to get a workout. And, 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 and he was preparing when he was 17 for when he, for when he turned 60. Right? Man, this past Sunday, uh, Sadie came down. And I just happened to be watching an old Mission Impossible with uh, the late, great Philip Seymour Hoffman was the bad guy in this one. I don't remember what number Mission Impossible it was. And Sadie goes, is that Tom Cruise from Maverick? And I said, yeah. And then she sits down and she looks at him and she goes, he looks cool. Oh, my God. What are we talking? 45, 55 years since the outsiders and little kids still think Tommy C looks cool. <laughs> Unbelievable, bro. I mean, how we're all not Scientologists. I mean, mean, I don't even know. Is Rob Lowe a Scientologist, by the way? I didn't ask. I don't Uh, think so. I might. But, uh, and then I went over to Conan O'Brien's podcast. This guy, he's got a podcast, right? Yeah, I know. Wow. I go to his, this guy bought a house, and basically it's a production studio. He's got editing in there. Have you been there, Patrick? Which Conan Conan's uh, no. studio bought a house in, on Larchmont over there, and basically moved the Conan O'Brien show over to this house. He's got editing suites in there. He's got a podcast. You know what I like? What they have, Patrick? They had, and I want to get your take on this. The camera's coming from the ceiling. What's your take on that? Oh, like on cool. a pole that drops yeah, down. Yeah, yeah. We could put um, plates in, then and then clip things to him, take them out at the end, and have nothing on the floor? Yeah, I mean, I'm just looking around. It seems like it's kind of like <clears throat> there's a lot of equipment here. And over there, it seemed like it was very, like, clean. They had about six cameras in a circle. I don't know. It, look, it looked pretty pretty, uh, pretty cool. Maybe we uh, we look into that. But, uh, uh, yeah, this guy. And, and it's like these guys, he's got, like, four people in the room, right? Like- he's got, like... His assistant in there, produce three people. There's just a lot of people. I've noticed this. Like you go to these podcasts, there's just like a lot of people. Yeah, in the yeah. room right. when you're doing the show, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I know Rogan's got his guy, just one guy. But I'm just saying, sometimes you go, there's like a party. He's right. like, yeah, you know, when people come here, they do the podcast, they hang out in the kitchen, they cook, cook. <laughs> Like, could you imagine going to do Conan's podcast and then afterwards you're making lamb chops in the kitchen? <laughs> I, I can't. Hey, Conan, you mind if I whip myself up an omelet before I take off? Holy shit. <laughs> now, uh, now, does he film too? Like, so you're casting and filming? Yeah. So I got to ask, is there a hair, hair and makeup going on or what? No, no hair and makeup, which I've seen at other podcasts. Like, Bill Maher had hair and makeup. Uh, but here's something he did, and I want to get your take on this. Conan or Bill Maher? Who this you is saying? to Conan. Right now, you're saying yeah. Conan? You? Oh, okay. So I told him, I said, you know, I've done your show, I don't know, five times. Now I'm doing your podcast. 
and it came up on the on the podcast. Like, how do you how does it feel to be Conan's friend? I go, I'm, to be honest with you, we're not friends. You know, I I know you, but it's like I don't got your phone number. We don't hang out. You know, it's I know you through doing your show. I go, you, you know, let me get your number. We'll like do some wine. I got people up at the house all the time. You can come up. We have a little wine, whatnot. So at the end, I go, give me your number, and bro. This guy writes his number down on a piece of paper. I go, are you, are you writing your number down? He goes, I like to write my number down. And then he goes, I like to draw a little picture next to it. So he gave me his number, and the picture was a glass of wine. Like, that's freaking cool, Like, if, if, if me and you didn't know each other, right? That's- and we were talking. I go, Pete, can yeah. I get your number? And in the conversation, let's say, I don't know, Blue Moon came up or whatever. Pot came up. Right. And you would just, yeah. it's almost like a signature of like, oh, now that I look at the phone number, the piece of paper, and look at the glass of wine, I go, oh, yeah, we were talking yeah. about getting a glass of wine together. I thought it was a beautiful touch. I think it is too. I think it is too. And I tell you, I did a show one time, and if I asked for his number, it would have just been a hand waving goodbye <laughs> and no number, because I just did. I didn't feel a connection. <laughs> but I will say this: not only is that so cool, I think Conan O'Brien is at the level of legendariness where I'd almost. I'd almost frame it. I put the number in my phone, but then I think I might frame that little photo and put it in my office with like, like that's a cool, what's that? But maybe like white out a few numbers so no one could come in there and get Conan's number, but just be like, yeah, now that's, I asked for Conan's number once and he gives you a little picture next to it to remind you of what we're going to do when I call it. Step, step cool. ahead of you. Fuck. Cool. I need a thing. I need a thing. Got what do you got? But that made, that inspired me. I mean, remember the guy we talked about who did the coin with their face on him? Remember that? We talked about that one, Cass? Was that the, that was an Italian? Oh, movie. yeah. Who was that oh. that left the coin? But yeah, I'm a step ahead of you. Oh, was that, was that the Chaz? By the way, he's coming maybe? to the. Uh, uh, anyway, what you all, what you He's coming buddy? to the uh, premiere. Now we're talking. Now we're talking. Now, is, is Chaz a guy? Wait a minute. Did I? Oh, bro, I didn't even tell you this. I'm, I, 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 got, I got to switch gears here. Did I tell you I ran into Andy Garcia at the Lakers game again? Like, I saw him. F- again? Yeah. Again? Other than I went that- to the Lakers game twice. First I saw him, I wanted to talk to him. Second time I saw him, is he running low on his computer card? Oh, okay, he's fine. So, Pete, I talked to him again. And now it's just me, Lana, him, and his daughter. And I and I go, I got to tell you, we have a podcast. And I go, first of all, you're one of my favorite actors. But we have a podcast, and you come up every now and again. And I want to, I want to tell you that in Godfather Three, when you did that scene when the two guys break into your house, I've never seen a man scared wearing a nylon on his head. And he goes, and I go that 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 red robe, and the daughter goes, he loves that red robe. He still has it. He took the robe. Oh! Holy no, shit. No, Patrick, while I'm talking, find the clip of <laughs> oh my God. on Godfather 3 with the guy in the nylon, all right? He proceeds to tell me that scene. He goes, go to that scene and go back and look at it. He goes... There's a part in that scene where I take the butt of the gun and I hit the guy over the head with it. The gun was supposed to be plastic, but it was real. So when I hit the guy on the head, 
it's a real gun, and it gashed his head, and blood started coming out of the guy's head, right? Now, Garcia didn't know it was a real gun. He just thought it was plastic, right? So he hits him, and he goes, you could see in the scene, they cut it, but you could see, I go, oh, like, like, fuck, you know, like, almost to say, fuck, that's, that's real. He goes, we did that huh. scene several times, but they ended up using the scene that I used a real gun on the guy's head, right? And the and the reaction of the guy is is real. It's right. like ah, oh! like he really got hit in the head. Uh, oh. Do we have that scene? Okay, yeah. I'm, I'm gonna throw up the scene here, and we're gonna like we're gonna, we'll analyze this like like, yeah. it, like it's game tape. Or could we do this now? Now that my God, one second. So any. And by the way, the, the fact that that Andy Garcia still has the robe—I mean, that, that that's up there with you know Liza Minnelli having her mom's slippers from Wizard of Oz. Oh, you know what I'm God, saying? No, I mean, that's the, like the the red robe from Godfather Three. God, that's like a price. Yeah, that went <laughs> in a glass case, guy. That's that's an auction item, <laughs> right? So, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, we're talking. Right, and this is my new thing. I got a new thing I'm doing now, and I've never done this before. We're talking about just life and whatnot, and comedy, and da 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 da. He's a, he's in a band. Garcia's in a band. He's been in a band for years. He's you know he plays piano and the guitar, or whatever. Yeah, Cuban yeah. music, right? I think like so. He goes, we gotta go golf. You know, I, I belong to this, this country club and whatnot. So I go, give me your number. I never used to do this before. It'd be like, hey, we're talking, all right, goodbye. I'm like, you know what? Give me the number. Right, right. So I not only get his number, but I say, I want to have you as a guest on the podcast. He goes, let me know. Bro. If I could get Garcia to the, if I could get Garcia to the house in his robe. By the way, I don't, I don't, oh yeah, here, here, here. All right. Yeah. Let's see. Let's see. Hey, right, here, he's gonna, he's gonna hit him in the head. Fucking cut his throat, man. Uh, What'd you say? I said cut his fucking throat. That's it. That was real. What did you say? <laughs> I said, cut her fucking throat. I heard, I heard, I heard him say, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, you can no, that was me. Oh. You got, man. <laughs> <laughs> Do it one more time. Oh, that was you? All right, let me hear, let me hear. Shh, no one say nothing. What did you say? I said, cut her fucking throat. Yeah. <laughs> you hear that, ooh? Okay, chief. Yeah. Bro, inside information. On the Godfather red robe scene. Well, this this brings up a bigger question now. I guess this is for Patrick, maybe homework or something. But, you know, you're talking guys like Garcia. And, you know, if I get in Chaz's ear at the, uh, the premiere and ask him to be a part of the cast, these guys might not be willing to travel. And I want to know, can we take this cast with, with, with a camera and do a 10-minute setup where Garcia walks into his backyard and he, and he's not looking going, oh, what the fuck is this clusterfuck? Like, can it be clean and neat and, like, set up and Andy walks out and boom? Wait, wait. Um, or does it got to be to the house? And if it's to the house, I mean, you're going to have to rent an SUV guy with a hot tub <laughs> to Andy Garcia. No, we, we, have him come, <laughs> we have him come to the house. He comes up here. We sit down. This is what I'm telling you, bro. This is like when, when you, you got to be here for this shit. When when we interview Garcia, I can't have Garcia here in the room, and you sitting in Fredonia going, "Hold on, hold on, Andy, Andy, one second, can you? Get, it's you're gonna be detached." I know. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, I know, I know, man, I know. That's why I listen. I know I'll, I'll get out there, but it's like, uh, if Andy's gonna be like, uh, "Hey, listen, I can bop up there next Tuesday," then you know, yeah, you, you might have to do a. That's unbelievable. That's um, it's, that's what I'm talking about. We got a line, bro. I'm very excited. I, Andy Garcia, incredible. Um, 
If we do the cast at his place, maybe we could try to robe on. Bro, I tell him to bring. I'll tell him to bring <laughs> the robe here. I'll tell him to come in the robe, do the interview in the fucking thing. So, so listen. Um, we got to thank everybody for listening here, Pete and Sebastian show. Um, we got some always. Uh, we got some big things planned this summer. Uh, I got some shows I just added. Uh, we'll go to SebastianLive.com, May fifteenth. We're gonna do a big announcement of just some some summer shows. I'm doing like five cities, uh, and and uh, Pete's gonna be a part of of some of that. So you want to pay attention to that. Patreon.com, Pete and Sebastian show, five bucks a month. Go there if you need a little extra of us. Uh, we give you an episode, uh, one 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 episode a month. Some behind the scenes. And uh, what else? What else you got, Pete? You got anything you want to add? No, that's about it, man. Keep, uh, you know, thanks for signing up for the Patreon. And uh, thanks for all the messages and the support, man. Let's keep this puppy going. And let me just there practice. Let me just Pro practice. AI, bro. Yeah. All right. All right. Good hanging. <laughs>